This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Oh, is that the new iPad? Yep. Kinda looks like an iPad mini to me. It's actually the 11 inch and it's awesome. <laughs> Not as awesome as my 13 inch, you know what they say? Go big or go home. <laughs> mm-hmm, if you're trying to compensate for something. Why don't you come over here and say that to my face? Dude, did you really say that to me? What I meant to say is that my hand is as big as yours. Yeah, whatever. Now, since I've been asked more than once to give my two cents on the topic of whether or not you should buy the 11 inch or the 13 inch iPad, regardless if that is the now iPad Air or the Pro, I decided to lay everything on the table and help you make the right choice. In fact, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a guide which will hopefully solidify your decision. Now, I have the 13 inch M4 iPad Pro and I also have my last year's M2 11 inch. But for a fair comparison, uh, because they're very similar now with you know specs and internals, I need to get the newest M4 11 inch. And for that purpose, I kind of need to go steal the new iPad, the smaller one from a friend of mine. First things first, today's decision covers both the Pro lineup of iPads with the M4 chips and the new iPad Airs, which for the first time are stretched out to a 13 inch model. For illustration purposes, I'll be showcasing the Pro models since those are the ones that I have at my disposal, but pretty much everything I say applies to both the Pros and the Airs. While you might think choosing an iPad is just about the screen size, let's be real, budget plays a big role too. This is actually my friend whose desk setup we fixed a couple weeks ago. I have a video on it on the channel, so feel free to check it out. Gotta go. He said he doesn't use it anyway that much. The Pro models have a $300 price gap and the Airs are a bit kinder on your wallet with a $200 difference. And here is a fun fact. The price difference for accessories between 11 inches and 13 inches is like paying 20 to 30% more for a bigger pair of shoes. So I guess it's true, size does matter. The only place where it doesn't play a role is when we talk about the Apple Pencil. Everything else, including the front-facing cameras are pretty much the exact same no matter if we talk about the iPad Pros or the iPad Airs. Now in terms of quality, it's not the place to discuss that, but feel free to tell me in the, in the comments what you think about how terrible they look compared to the iPhone. Unfortunately, it's true. At least they're, you know, located at the right place this time around. Another thing to keep in mind when shopping for iPads is that both the Pro models and the Air are pretty much twins when it comes to specs, with the only difference being their batteries and speakers. So whether you go for the petite 11 inch or you know go big or go home 13 inches, in terms of processing power and display quality, it's like choosing between the same high quality buffet. Hence the difficult dilemma this time around. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? Even though the 13 inch iPads, especially when paired with a Magic Keyboard, offer an experience close to a 13 inch MacBook Air, you'll definitely feel them in your sling or bag. Pulling out a 13 inch iPad with a Magic Keyboard is a deliberate act. You need to clear some space on the table because you'll need it. If you decide to leave the keyboard behind, you'll still need to find a place to set it aside. And if you're packing it alongside a laptop, things get pretty heavy. Now that I have my 14 inch MacBook Pro and the 13 inch iPad Pro, I really have to think twice before leaving the studio. Holding 3 kilos on my back isn't exactly appealing, something that isn't an issue with the 11 inch iPad. The 11 inch iPad is perhaps the perfect size if you primarily use it as a sidekick to your laptop. It's not too small for jotting down notes or drawing, but it's ideal for use as an extended display or a portable entertainment unit. Carrying the 11 inch iPad with just a smart folio, you'll barely notice it's there. And when you pull it out of your bag, it's much less intimidating to use even handheld. It's compact, convenient, and ready to go wherever you are. Whether you're working from a cafe, park, an airport lounge, in the bus, on the plane, the 11 inch iPad is the clear winner here. Hell, 
I gotta be honest, they're very similar devices, but the tandem OLED on the M4 is absolutely delicious. It is very much like my dream iPad mini, albeit a little bit bigger, but it's making my choice between the 13 inch and the 11 inch this year even more difficult because they're very much the same devices. You get all the good stuff on this smaller version. As with everything iPad, pretty much all apps work beautifully, no matter if you choose the 11 inch or the 13 inch iPad model. One iPad app you can take advantage of, which actually works on all devices out there, is Brilliant. It is a learning platform designed to be uniquely effective. Brilliant's first principles approach helps you build understanding from the ground up. And a great example of that is the Exploring Data Visually course that I'm taking right now. In it, you can learn how to parse and visualize visualize massive data sets to make them easier to interpret and gain insights by working with real data sets from sources like Starbucks, X, Spotify and more. Brilliant helps you build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing, where you can learn a little every day for both personal and professional growth. With fun lessons, you can do that whenever you have time. It is the opposite of mindless scrolling, so try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days by visiting brilliant.org forward slash this is e or clicking on the very first link in the description below. You'll also get 20% off on an annual premium subscription. Quick disclaimer, everything that I'm about to say about writing and especially drawing on both sizes of the iPads does not apply to professional artists. Individual experiences may vary. So. Talking about notes and casually drawing or sketching on both sizes is a pretty similar experience. Sure, close to 40% more screen real estate on the 13-inch iPad sounds impressive, but remember, you'll need enough physical space around you to use it comfortably. If you're a student, sitting on a small desk surrounded by textbooks, for example, you might not have the luxury to slap that massive 13-inch in front of you and start taking notes. Plus, let's not forget that when you're writing or drawing, you often need to shift your device around. This is 10 times more comfortable and less cringe on the 11 inch iPad. So it really boils down to whether you're ready to sacrifice a bit more scrolling for more freedom. Speaking of screens, everything handheld is better on the 11 inch. Whether you're gaming without a controller or watching something while holding the smaller tablet, you'll probably have to hit the bathroom before your hands get tired. On the other side, the 13 inch is fantastic for immersing yourself in a TV show or a movie, but only if it's cradled or propped up. In my initial M4 iPad review, which I'll link at the end of this video, I talked about the top heavy weight of the iPad with the Magic Keyboard, which makes it prone to leaning back. Watching something in that scenario on your lap will require for you to occasionally keep the tablet secure with one hand. Personally, I am not a big center stage fan and I prefer to use the iPad in each of its apps in either full screen or split screen most of the time. However, I know for a fact that plenty of people take advantage of Windows support with center stage and in this area, the larger iPad is clearly the winner. Sure, you can do pretty much the same things on the smaller tablet and stack a bunch of windows in front of you, but you'll barely manage to do something decent unless you really scale it down. For productivity junkies, especially those who use the iPad as their main device, the 11 inch might feel like a squeeze. The larger 13 inch screen provides real estate necessary to comfortably use multiple windows and apps without feeling, you know, Cramped. So whether you are into intense multitasking or you just want a bit more breathing room, the 13 inch is the better choice. That same feeling of pressure might be felt when typing on the keyboard on the 11 inches as well. When comparing both keyboard layouts, on one side you have an equivalent of a 13 inch keyboard which is pretty much the same as a laptop and on the other you have a, you know, baby version, so to speak. Where keys like the shift, caps, return and arrows are shrunken down, in fact, everything is shrunken down as much as possible in order to feature the same set of keys. In all fairness, this baby version of the layout is something that I've been using for the last two years before upgrading to this 13 inch this year. And I'm so used to it at this point that I can type just as fast as I can do on the larger one, but I do get a bit tired of having to squeeze hold the smaller iPad in my lap, which is where I like to type most of the time. Meanwhile, typing on the new 13 inch Magic Keyboard is awesome, but boy does it tilt back. I have to keep it at bay at all times. In terms of audio, we can't defy the laws of physics. The larger tablet clearly offers a more thumpy and deep presence, providing a richer and more immersive sound experience. Regardless of how you can experience it through your speakers here on YouTube, the smaller tablet behaves admirably as well. 
Unfortunately, I don't have the airs here with me, but I'm sure the sound difference there will be pretty much the same. Interestingly enough, if you see Apple's own iPad comparison page, you'll notice that all the new Airs and Pros offer the same battery performance numbers. Up to 10 hours of surfing the web on Wi-Fi or watching video. By the way, these numbers haven't changed since the first gen iPad Pros. Unless you're using a cellular version which drains a tad faster. You can expect almost equal performance regardless of the size or model you go for, whether that's an Air or Pro. The minutes difference in benchmark tests is really negligible. When it comes to sidekick abilities, meaning which iPad is better to serve a purpose alongside your laptop, both sizes are impressive, but they shine in different ways. For example, in Sidecar, the 13-inch iPad can accommodate more windows, just like these center stage examples I mentioned earlier. It also exceeds as an editor preview screen, giving you a larger and more detailed view of your work. In my desk setup video, which I'll link below, I showed you how I use the tablet as a third vertical screen, which works even better with the larger model. The additional screen real estate is a game changer for multitasking and productivity at home or in the office. However, when it comes to portable desk setups, like pulling out your laptop and iPad in a cafe to instantly initiate a dual side-by-side -side setup, the 11-inch really shines. It's light, inconspicuous in your everyday carry and still offers plenty of screen real estate. You won't feel as if you're setting up a mini command center in the middle of your favorite coffee shop. All in all, the 11-inch is perfect for on-the-go moments when you really need a quick, efficient setup without drawing too much attention. So to help you make an informed decision, I'll have the pros and cons of having a smaller or larger iPad despite it being the Air or the Pro. Feel free to pause the video here and take a screenshot if you want to refer to it later. Now every use case is different, but hopefully the guide that I've prepared will nudge you in the right direction. So let's go through it together. If you own a big laptop and travel less, get the 11 inch iPad with the optional smart folio and pencil. I'm saying that because you can always use universal mouse and keyboard when necessary, meaning you can use the keyboard and the trackpad of your MacBook. If you own a big laptop and travel more, the logical thing to do is to get the 11 inch again and I suggest you get the smart folio to protect it for the most part. Now if you need a keyboard and a pencil, of course you can get it. If you are a creative person, naturally you have to get the 13 inch model with the pencil of course and maybe the cover or the magic keyboard depending if you plan to type on it. If your iPad is your primary device, I say go for, you know, the 13 inch plus everything else from the accessories department, magic keyboard and pencil. If you use the iPad casually, just get the 11 inch iPad Air plus a smartphone to protect it and that's it. If you like to experiment with drawing, or jotting, just get the pencil. When it comes to multitasking and productivity, 13 inches is way better with the Magic Keyboard, of course, where the pencil is very much optional. Talking about portable entertainment, 11 inches is the way to go with the smart folio to protect it, and optionally the pencil. Students and note takers can go with either the 11 inch or the 13 inch, but I think if you, you know, carry around textbooks and stuff like that, perhaps the smaller one will be better and you'll still have enough space to jot down notes in class. Professionals who are always on the go, I think 11 inches will be plenty big with the magic keyboard and the pencil because this way you'll be able to sign and redact documents. So, truth be told, I decided to sell my 13 inch M4 in favor of the smaller version because honestly, I find it too big. If I could have used the big boy as a true laptop replacement, that might have been a different story. But in my workflow, it still feels more like a sidekick to my laptop, which means I end up having to carry both. The silver lining for me here is that I won't be missing any of the, you know, stellar display qualities that are also present on the smaller iPad Pro. If you end up enjoying this video, be sure to check out my 13-inch iPad Pro review here, as well as my interesting take of a comparison with the M3 MacBook Air. Like and subscribe to the channel, as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is Z, over and out.